of you who are entering tonight perhaps you've come to this worship gathering expecting the same thing that you've experienced time and time again but how many of you know that sometimes the Lord will have you to declare a thing before it happens and so I don't know why the Lord has rested this uh, on my spirit tonight to declare that he is his name is a strong tower the righteous run in and then we are safe Sometimes we declare things before they happen. Sometimes we declare things um, in, by way of pre-protection. And so I don't know who you are or where you are tonight, what you're coming in here with tonight. But can you just declare that over your life tonight, that I am safe. I am safe. That nothing can harm me. Nothing will hinder me. Nothing will uh, stop me. Nothing will hold me back. I am safe. I am safe. I am safe. We, as a body, we are safe. I talk a lot about, and I joke about, like, hey, I'm just trying to be obedient. But no, for real, I'm trying to be obedient. And somebody literally needs to open your mouth and say, I am safe. I am safe. We have no idea what's happening in the spiritual realm. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. We have no idea the, the war that the enemy is trying to wage against our very soul. And so may this song be a song of pre-protection, Lydia. May this song be a song of pre-protection, Lindsay. May this song be a song of pre-protection, Jackie. We have no idea the angels that are warring on our behalf, fighting the enemy, holding back the hand of the enemy. Yes, the hand of the enemy so we're gonna sing this again tonight the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run in and they are safe we are safe I am safe again I have no idea why the Lord is inviting us into this chorus tonight I know y'all came, we're going to sing some songs, and we're going to hear some announcements, and we're going to hear a sermon, and then the kids are going to go to their class and teach. No, we don't know what God wants to do tonight, but we're open. We're open to what he wants to do tonight. So we're going to declare this one more time. From, from the word of the Lord in Proverbs, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in, and we are saved. Come on, let's sing this one more time. The name of the Lord, come on, with your voices, sing tonight. Hallelujah, say, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Is a strong tower. The righteous run in. The righteous run in. And they are safe. And they are safe. The name of the Lord, hallelujah. The name of the Lord. Is a strong tower. Is a strong tower. The righteous run in. The righteous run in. And they are safe. Where's Brandon? They are safe. Where's Brandon? The name of the Lord. The name of the Lord. Is a strong tower. Is a strong tower. The righteous run in. Just get my oil, get my oil, and they are safe. They are safe. The name of the Lord, hallelujah. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Is a strong tower. The righteous run in. The righteous run in. And they are safe. They are safe. Say they are safe. They are safe.
And God, even as they set out for the Dominican Republic, in just a couple of days, God, we pray for their physical well-being. We pray for their physical safety. And God, that every detail is covered even as they are away from Fresno, that every detail in Fresno is covered. Their children are covered. Their children are safe. Their home is safe. God, would this be a trip that binds their hearts together and draws them closer to you? God, would you protect their marriage? protect their marriage. God, thank you for mutual submission and mutual respect and mutual love and deepened friendship. Nothing can harm them. <laughs> Nothing can harm them. Nothing can harm them. Cause they are safe. Say nothing can harm them. Nothing can harm them. Nothing can harm them. Because they are safe. Nothing can harm them. Nothing can harm them. Nothing can harm Because they are safe. Nothing can harm them. If you're just joining us, hi, welcome. It's okay if you have no idea what's going on. We want to be obedient to what the Spirit is saying. And tonight, the Lord is inviting us to cover our next-gen co-directors. They have entered the credentialing process through the Evangelical Covenant Church to be credentialed as pastors. And I don't know if you know anything about taking a next step or taking a step of faith, but when you take a step of faith, the enemy comes against you to try to stir up fear and apprehension and reluctance in your heart. And so as they have re-entered and re-engaged this credentialing process through the Evangelical Covenant Church, just know, just know that as you are extending your hands towards them, just know that as we are covering them, we're not just covering our next-gen co-directors, we're covering our pastors. At the end of the day, that's what we're doing. You don't let people talk crazy and be crazy to your kids. You don't let people talk crazy and be crazy to your spouse. Let's not let people talk crazy and be crazy to our pastors. For they look after your souls the souls of your children, the souls of the youth. Again, I have no idea what's going on. I'm just being obedient, y'all. <laughs> I know we have some stuff to do. I sent out the flow on Thursday. I do get that. But this is what the Lord wanted to do tonight. Yeah, yeah. And so this is what we submit ourselves to tonight, what the Lord wants to do. We had to find you, Brandon. You was hiding. <laughs> Come on, let's sing this one last time. The name of the Lord. This time is for you, Jeff. This time is for you, Jeff. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in. And Jeff, Jeff is safe. Come on, let's sing it. Here we go. The name of the Lord, say. The name of the Lord. Come here, Jeff. Come here, Jeff. Is a strong tower. The righteous run in. Righteous running, and they are safe. And they are safe. The name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Is a strong tower. The righteous running. There you go. Righteous See, he knows. Running. And they are safe. They are safe. The name of the Lord. The Hallelujah. The Lord. Is a strong tower. A strong tower. The righteous running. The righteous running. And they. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Jesus, the righteous run in. And Jeff is safe. 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 Hallelujah. Jeff is safe. He says the best is yet to come. Jeff is safe. Jeff is safe. to come. 
come. Yet to come. The best is 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 yet to come. He is saying. 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 Jeff, continue to cry out to the Lord. Continue to cry out to the Lord with full sincerity. You're not trying to impress anybody. You can care less about what anybody says or thinks about you. Continue to cry out to the Lord with sincere gratitude and genuineness and authenticity. And he is saying the best really is yet to come. And he said he heard you when you told him, I'm for real this time, God. I'm for real this time, God. I'm not doing this back and forth. I'm for real time God and he said I know because I'm for real with you I'm for real with you the best is yet to come Jeff the best is yet to come hallelujah the best is yet to come 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 the best is yet to come. Yes, yet to come. The name of the Lord. The, the name, name of the Lord. Lord. The strong tower. The strong tower. The righteous running. The righteous running. And Jeff is saved. Jeff is yes. saved. The name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous running. And Jeff is saved. Jeff is Strong tower, the righteous running. Jeff is saved. Jeff is saved. The name of the Lord yeah. is a strong tower. The righteous running. The righteous running. Jeff is saved. Jeff is saved. He 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 is saved.
righteous running. Righteous running. And we are safe. We are safe. And so we cancel the plans of the enemy tonight who would have some of our young people who would have some of our young people thinking that the only way out is to end it. So we come against suicidal ideation in the name of Jesus. We cancel those plans. We cancel the letter. We cancel the method. We cancel the reasons why. We cancel those negative words that have been spoken over you so much so to where you felt like the last thing was to kill yourself. We come against suicide in the name of Jesus. in such a dark place where you felt like the only the only thing to do was to end it and our problems are big yes they're big I'm not downplaying that but can you imagine what these teens go through day after day after day <laughs> point to these young people tonight and join in with the worship team as they declare you shall live 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 to declare the works of the Lord you shall live you shall live and not die you shall live to declare the works of the Lord you shall live you shall live to declare the works of the Lord you shall live. You shall live. You shall live. Yes, you shall live. CJ, you shall live. You shall live. You shall live. There's nothing too hard for God. 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 CJ, you shall live. You shall live. I declare it in the name of Jesus. You shall live. 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 There's nothing too hard for God. You shall live. There's nothing too big for God. You shall live. There's nothing too impossible for God. You shall live. 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 You shall live to declare his glory. You shall live to declare his glory. You shall live. You shall live, you shall, you shall live to be his witness. You shall live, you shall live. You Come on, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying for these you. you shall keep praying for these teens. You shall live, you shall live, you shall live. Again, it's okay if you don't know exactly what's going on. We're just being obedient tonight. You shall live. And so just extend your hand towards these teens and continue to pray for life and life more abundantly. Continue to pray for life and life more abundantly to flow from their lives. 
to flow from their lives and that as they live, as they live, they would encourage their peers to live. You shall 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 live. Yes, you shall live. You shall live. You shall live. To declare the works of the Lord. To declare the works of the Lord. Yes, you shall live. We say yes to life. You shall live. You shall live. You shall live. Come on. The name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Is a strong tower. The righteous running. Righteous running. And they are safe. They are safe. The name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Is a strong tower. Righteous running, righteous running, and they are safe. They are safe. The name of the Lord, name of the Lord, is a strong tower. Strong tower. The righteous running, righteous running, and they are safe. They are safe. The name of the Lord, name of the Lord, is a strong tower. The righteous running, righteous running, and they are safe. Come on, one more time, say the name of the Lord. So I'm being obedient and I feel led to do this. If your child is up here, please hear my heart when I say what I'm getting ready to say to them. This is no knock on anyone's parenting. That's not what this is. But I feel led by the Lord tonight to apologize to apologize to these teens on behalf of us parents when we didn't know all of the answers we didn't know exactly what to do and all we did was what we thought was best and it actually wasn't the best I apologize to you I apologize to you. I apologize to you. I apologize to you. I apologize to you on behalf of the parenting community for the ways that we've failed you. Not intentionally for the ways that we've harmed you. Not intentionally for the ways that we've betrayed your trust. Not intentionally for the ways that we've disappointed you. You needed us to show up a certain way and we didn't know how to do that. So I apologize to you on behalf of all of us parents and asking, will you forgive us? Will you forgive us? And we will try to do better. We'll try to do better. With the help of the Lord, we will try to do better. And we thank you for grace. We thank you for having mercy towards us. We thank you for giving us another chance. We thank you for not, not judging us when we do the wrong things or when we tell you to do something and we actually go and do the other thing, the opposite. We apologize and we ask that you forgive us tonight. We say that we love you. We care for you deeply. And sometimes we just need help. We don't know how to do it all. And so thank you for being our children. Thank you for loving us back, even, even in times when we feel like we don't deserve your love. Thank you for loving us. We have deeply, deeply harmed you in unintentional ways. And we apologize for those parents who may be absent from your life. I need you to come. And would you just embrace these young men the way that only a father could? We are a 
healing community, healing its community. And sometimes this is what it looks like. Sometimes this is what it looks like. Sometimes this is what it looks like. The name of the Lord, name of the Lord is a strong tower. Is a strong tower. The righteous run in. Righteous run in. They are safe. They are safe. The name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Is a strong tower. The righteous run in. Righteous run in. And they are safe. They are safe. We cancel the plans of the enemy. 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 Yeah. They are saved. They are saved. Say, your mind is safe. Your mind is safe. Your mind is safe. Is a strong tower. Is a strong tower. The righteous run in. Righteous run in. And they are saved. And they are saved. The name of the Lord. The name of the Lord. Is a strong tower. Is a strong tower. The righteous run in. Righteous run in. And they are saved. They are saved. They are saved. They are saved. Say the name of the Lord. The name of the 
As Mama Marcia and Jackie are passing out the elements tonight, in this spirit of worship, in this spirit of praise, in this atmosphere of healing and declaration of what it is that the Lord is going to do among us and what he's already doing, we want to together as a healing community just Prepare our hearts to receive, to receive, to receive the Lord's Supper tonight. 
to receive communion tonight, to receive the bread, to receive the juice. Somebody walked in and said, this is not how we normally do things. You are absolutely right. I knew the Lord wanted to do something different among us tonight. I just didn't know what. So I'm thankful for the obedience. I'm thankful for the voice of the Lord tonight. That if nothing else, if nothing else, if nothing else, Brandon and Jess and Jeff and these teens know that we, as their community, we are covering them, amen? We are covering them. If nothing else, nothing else. We are covering them as our brothers and as our sisters. We are covering them. If nothing else, they know that we are covering them. If nothing else, they know that we are covering them tonight. Stay there. What? can wash away my sins nothing but the blood of jesus and what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of jesus all oh, precious say that again say what can wash away nothing nothing but the blood of and what can make me whole come on say nothing but the blood oh precious oh precious Nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood. Come on, say, nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Come on, one more time, say, nothing but the blood. but the blood say nothing but the blood of Jesus, nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood of Jesus, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Last time, here we go, say nothing, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Come on and put your hands together tonight. For the blood of Jesus, for the blood of Jesus, for the wonder-working power that is found in the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, 
the blood of Jesus. All the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Come on and sing that tonight. forgiveness in the blood. Come on, sing. There's forgiveness in the blood. There's forgiveness in the blood of Jesus. There's forgiveness in the blood. It washes white as snow. There's healing in the blood. Say, there's healing family hallelujah hallelujah this table this table this table when we come to this table Jesus commands us when we come to this table he commands us to remember right he says take eat this do this in remembrance yes of me he says when you drink this cup do this in remember he commissions us he calls us he commands us to remember remember what well to remember is to is to state very plainly that there's something to remember there's something that he has already done he calls us to this table and he says when you come to the table i want you to remember what i've already done what has he already done in your life? What has he already done in my life? What has he already done for this world? What has he already done? He's already invited us to a table. He's invited you and he's invited me. He invites the rich and powerful and at the same table, same table, he invites the poor and powerless. Remember, remember what he's already done. He, he invites the Spanish speaker, and at the same table, he invites the German speaker. That's what he's already done. He says, remember what I've already done. He said, I died for you. I gave my life for you that whosoever, 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 pumpkin pie lovers and sweet potato pie lovers, whosoever, 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 pozole lovers and menudo lovers, whosoever, whosoever, we're all welcome. Straight and gay, tall and short, brown and black and white. He said, whosoever, we're all welcome at this table. Why? Because you didn't, you didn't set the table. That's why. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Because had I set the table or you set the table, not everybody would have been welcome at the table. But this is the table that the Lord has prepared. 
and he's invited us all to this table. Let us remember. And so this evening tonight, I want to simply declare that again, this is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast that he has prepared. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. He said, Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink the cup, you you proclaim the thing that we need to constantly remember. You proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so let's pray a prayer of consecration tonight over these elements. Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, blessed forever to you be praise and honor for giving yourself shedding your blood and letting your body be broken in death for our sake so that we might have the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Bless, O oh God, this bread which we together eat and the cup which we together drink. Let us through this blessed bread and this blessed cup become partakers of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So tonight, let us all and I love this part. Not every church does it the same way, and, 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 and I, I love the way that all the different traditions of the church do it in their own way. I love them all, but I love in this moment that nobody ate first and nobody ate last. That's right. And so let us take and eat together. And now, sisters and brothers, what you hold in your hand is, is the cup, the new covenant in the blood of Christ. Let us drink it together. Hallelujah. And now let us together, as one unified body, pray a prayer of thanksgiving after receiving these elements. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Give us now your peace and grant us strength and courage through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 If I may, I know we've had them up a lot tonight, and I'm and that has just been such a blessing. But can I invite up all of our children and teenagers, please, all children and teenagers, we're going to be sending you out tonight. Super excited tonight that Miss Jackie has first step. All of our littlest ones, Miss Jackie is going to lead you and love you and care for you and disciple you and pour into you and pray for you. Miss Jackie has first step. Jessica has the rest of journey. And Brandon has all of our 7th through 12th graders in our space tonight. Would you please just extend your hands toward these children and youth and let us pray for them now. God, we give you glory. We thank you, God, that this group represents... Got a segment, a portion of the 70 teenagers that were in this building last night for fifth quarter. And so, God, we give you glory for everything that you are doing in their lives. You are shaping them after your own likeness and your own image. God, we pray your blessing over them now. And may you use Brandon, Jessica, and Jackie, God, to be a blessing to them this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. And together, let's say amen. All right, you all have an amazing, amazing evening. city.
blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed with the presence of one another. We are blessed uh, just with, with the physical and, and spiritual and even material things that, that God gives us, God graciously gives us. We are blessed. So um, I'm just going to say tonight, I don't know how much of this message I'm going to get through. I actually... It just is what it is at this point, okay? So the moment we walked in tonight, I told Chris, I, 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 Chris, play, these are the two songs I need you to play. I don't know why, but I need you to play these songs, and we're going to flow. I know that the Lord wants to do something different tonight. I don't know what it is, but we're going to be obedient, and so here we are, okay? So whatever happens tonight, whatever continues to happen tonight, just continues to happen tonight. Um, Lydia, where's Lydia? Where's Lydia? So I was going to do this at the end, but I want to give this to you now in case I don't get through this message, okay? Okay, so you have a, um, there is a little packet that's coming to you. I wanted to gift this to you, not just for tonight, but for the rest of the month, because we are in a brand new series this month called What's in a Name? What We Call God Matters. And if you don't remember anything else tonight, if you don't remember anything else Next week, as we talk about um, um, God being um, being Elohim, if you don't remember anything the week after that, as we talk about God being Yahweh, if you don't remember anything after that, as we talk about God being Jehovah Rapha, please know this. Hear me well. Hear me well. Hear me well. Before you start thumbing through, listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. You are able to see different facets of God based on the situations you find yourself in. I'll say it again. You are able to see and experience different facets of God based on the situations that you find yourself in. So if I am sick, I don't necessarily need him to be anything other than my healer, right? right? If I am broke and have no money and have no idea where, my, where the money is going to come from to pay my bills, I don't necessarily need him to do much else but be my provider. And so again, we are able to experience different facets of God based on the situations that we find ourselves in. Does that make sense? So there are lots of names. If you thumb through scripture, there are lots of names that we can call God. We've only got four weeks in June, though, so we're only going to tap into just four of those names. But if you thumb through that packet, you'll see that there's a, the second to the last sheet, there is space for you to do your own homework, and you identify the, the, the times where you needed him to show up as your shepherd. You needed him to show up as, your, uh, as food because you were hungry. You needed him to show up as water because you were thirsty. You, that page is for you. I don't know your story. I don't know your testimony. I don't know all the things that you've been through. I know what I'm going to put on my page, but I don't know what you're going to put on yours. And so that that second to the last page is for you. As you're reading scripture, what, Belperazim, what is that? Lord of the breakthrough, I've never heard of that. Okay, that's a perfect place for you to go deeper in that study. What does it mean for him to be the Lord of the breakthrough? What does it mean for him to be the one who provides for me, Jehovah Jireh. What does it mean for what, the times where I feel uncovered and vulnerable and unsafe? What does it mean for him to be my Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, my banner? That page is for you. You figure that out as you continue your walk with the Lord. Not just this month, but, but for the rest of your lives. He will show up and be to you the different things that you need him to be based on the situations that you find yourself in. I'm telling you something that I know, not something that I heard or learned in seminary, okay? He will be what you need him to be when you need him to be that. He will. He will. Found myself in a situation where someone said something very harmful about me and my family, and I wanted to immediately... And God said, I'm your defender. And he shut it down. He said, I'm your defender. I didn't need him to be my defender when everything was great. I needed him to be my defender when I felt like I needed to defend myself. Okay? So, again, you will experience different facets of God 
based on the situations that you find yourself in. Tonight, we get to unpack what it looks like for God to be Elroy, the God who sees me. One of the things that happened tonight, I'm, 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 it's making sense now. God is connecting the dots for me. One of the things that happened tonight with Brandon and Jess and with Jeff and with these teens, God wanted to remind them that they are not overlooked, that they are seen by the Most High God. It's making sense now. That's really, that's really what words of knowledge and prophecy is all about, is reintroducing us to the love of God so much so to where we know that he sees us. He sees us. He sees us. I don't know how many of you have ever felt overlooked. You felt mistreated. You felt neglected. But I want to remind you tonight, as we unpack this month, the names of God, I want to remind you tonight that God is Elroy. He is the God who sees. He is the God who sees. He is the God who sees. Uh, we're going to walk through Genesis uh, 15, 16, 17, and 21, and I'm going to get out of your way. Okay? I'm going to get out of your way. Again, you are able to see and experience different facets of God based on certain situations that you find yourselves in. Real quick, Genesis chapter 15 and Genesis 17, here's a summary. God made a covenant with Abram. This was before his name was changed to Abraham. And um, in, in this covenant, you know, he, God, God said that he was going to make Abraham a great nation and bless Abraham and make his name great so that he would then be a blessing. So this itself was a beautiful promise, but, but there was a major problem. How is it that God says, Abram, Abram I'm going to make you a great nation and his wife is barren, don't have no kids. Beautiful promise, major problem. A lot of times God will introduce promises to us and we're like, for real? <laughs> How is that gonna happen, God? This is what happens in Genesis chapter 15. And biblical scholars say that childlessness was a major threat to a marriage in biblical times. If a couple was unable to conceive a child, they looked upon them and their problem as chastisement from God. So can you imagine Abram and Sarai with all this wealth, all this land, all of these beautiful things, but no children? Can you imagine how the, how the community looked at them? Oh, you must have did something wrong. This is punishment from God. And so what happens in Genesis chapter 16, we'll read it very quickly. It'll be on your screen Genesis chapter 16, starting at verse 1, it says, Now Sarai, Abram's wife. Ooh, that's small. <laughs> if you can zoom in, uh, take your phone, take a picture of it, and then zoom in, okay? Or, or just look at it in your Bible. <laughs> Genesis chapter 16. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she said to Abram, The Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abram agreed to what Sarai said. So after Abram had been living in Canaan 10 years, Sarai, his wife, took her Egyptian slave, Hagar, and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar, and she conceived. When she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. Then Sarai said to Abram, You are responsible for the wrong I am suffering. I put my slave in your arms, and now that she knows she is pregnant, she despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me. Your slave is in your hands, Abram said. Do, what, do with her whatever you think best. Then Sarai mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. Verse 7, the angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was the spring, it was the spring that is beside the road to Shur. And he said, Hagar, slave of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will increase your descendants so much so that they will be too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord also said to her, you are now pregnant and you will give birth to a son. His, you shall name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard of your misery. 
He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And he will live hostile, host, he will live in hostility toward all his brothers. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. Verse 14, that is why the well was called Beer Lahai Roy. It is still there between Kadesh and Bered. So Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram gave the name Ishmael to the son she had born. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore him Ishmael. There's a whole lot to uncover in this section, but we won't due to time. So when you get home, because you don't have nothing else to do, read Genesis 16 again and, and just kind of unpack it a little bit more. But really quickly, Hagar was Sarai's maidservant or slave, and she was considered property and a legal extension of her mistress. What that means was she was actually given a variety of household tasks as well as legally permitted to act as a surrogate for Sarai's barren womb. Did you hear that? She was legally permitted. By the law of the time, she was able to give birth to a son um, on behalf of Sarai. But once Hagar permitted, once, once Hagar became pregnant, she began holding this over Sarai's head. And as a result, what happened? Sarai treated Hagar poorly. This caused Hagar to do what? Run away. Who wants to be mistreated? Who wants to be, you know... Right? So she ran away from her duties and from, this, from the mistreatment. And it's interesting, when you study um, this, this particular passage, you see that her name Hagar actually means to flee. It means wanderer or to flee. And an angel of the Lord met Hagar by a spring of water in the wilderness at Shur. And the word Shur actually means wall. So Hagar, the wanderer, she fled and her back was against the wall. Come on now. Come on now. It's good to me, y'all. <laughs> not only in this, in this passage, not only is Hagar surprised that God would send a messenger to meet her at a place like this and show her favor by telling her of her son's future, but she's also surprised that he would call her by name. Why is this a surprise to Hagar? Because Abram and Sarai only referred to her as that slave or your slave. And here, Hagar is recognizing the power in having her name called. I don't know what, uh, what was going on at the time. I don't know who else may have found themselves running away, who else may have been in the wilderness or who had experienced poor treatment from their own master or mistress but I can almost guarantee that Sarai, uh, that Hagar wasn't the only one in that wilderness. She wasn't the only one whose back was against the wall. But she is the one whose name is called in this passage. She is the one whose name was called in this passage. He, he called her name so she could call his name. And she named him El Roy, the God who sees me. And she named that place Beer Lahai Roy, well of the living one who sees. It's in this place of isolation and loneliness marked by disappointment and rejection that becomes the first place where it's recorded in Scripture that anyone names God. Imagine that. Imagine what would have happened had she stayed home. Would she have met Elroy? Or would she have met Devante? I don't know. I don't, <laughs> would she have met Elroy? It's in this place of isolation and desperation and rejection and loneliness that she's able to see him because he sees her. When everything is going well, we don't really need to, 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 to cry out to him or to, to, oh, God, I need you to be there. No, no, because everything's going well, but it's in the place of loneliness and desperation and isolation and rejection that she gets to say, God, you called me by name so I can call you by name. You are Elroy, the God who sees me. Don't despise, here's the point here, don't despise those times and seasons when you find yourself in deep loneliness and isolation and rejection. 
that may be the time that God wants to show you a different facet of his heart. That may be the time that he wants to show you another part of who he is that you have not experienced before. Don't despise those times. When Hagar names him the God who sees, she's saying he is the God who cares. He is the God who enters my pain. He is the one who defends me. He is the one who advocates for me. He doesn't make excuses for the ones who harm me. But he sees me and he calls me by name. This isn't in, in my notes, but I'm going to share this really quickly. Sometimes it's hard for me to forgive people who harm me because I feel like it makes what they did right. And that's not true. When, I, when I'm able to enter the process of forgiveness for someone who harmed me, I'm saying, God, I trust you with them just like I trust you with me. And I'm choosing to release them from my grip of condemnation. And it doesn't make it right what they did to me. And I know, God, as my defender, you are not making excuses for what they did. This is what Hagar was able to do. God, you see me, and I see you, and I see you seeing me, seeing you, seeing me, and you seeing me, seeing you. And I know that as I see you seeing me, seeing you, that you're not making excuses for the way that Sarai treated me. That's good. He's not making excuses. He's not making excuses. In this brief exchange, God told uh, Hagar to go back home. She obeyed, and needless to say, <laughs> there was no shalom in the home. There was still drama. There was tension. There was bitterness. There was awkwardness. She was walking on eggshells. Anybody ever have to walk on eggshells in your own home? Ooh, better not say that because she's going to get mad. Better not say that. Okay? This is what was happening with Hagar. She was having to walk on eggshells because uh, Sarai was so awful to her. When you skip a couple of chapters, we go to Genesis chapter 20, 21. I'm not going to read all of it for you due to the interest of time, but if you could just write in your notes on, on that page, Elroy, Genesis 21, verses 8 through 21. And again, when you get home, because you have nothing else to do, you have no dishes to wash, you have no laundry to fold, you have no kids to put to bed, I know, your life is free. <laughs> just kidding. Read it, read it, read it, read it. It's really, really, really good. Genesis uh, 21, 8 through 21, okay? So remember in Genesis 16, Hagar ran away, and God saw her. And then he said, go back home. Well, in Genesis 21, you'll, you'll read the exchange. This time, Abram, Abraham now and Sarah now, their names have been changed. This time, Abraham and Sarah, they sent Hagar away. So the first time she ran away, the second time they sent her away. Okay? What happens now is really incredible because... God was able to meet Hagar as she was sent away now. God was able to meet her differently and not just see her in Genesis 16, but now in Genesis 21, he was able to hear her and provide for her and secure her future. Let me tell you what happens. In Genesis chapter 21, verses 8 through 21, I'm just going to read this part right here. Verse 15, when the water in the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went off and sat down about a bow shot away, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there, she began to sob. Verse 17, God heard the boy crying, and the angel of the Lord called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, what is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Verse 19, then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy as he grew up. He lived in the desert and became an archer. While he was living in the desert of Paran, his mother got a wife for him from Egypt. Why does any of this matter? Abraham and Sarah sent Hagar away, and they sent her away with just a little bit of resources 
which is really messed up. He was, a, he was not a good baby daddy. He just wasn't. He had a whole lot of resources, and he sent her away with just a little bit. And they ran, her and her son ran out. They ran out of water. And she began to cry. And God heard. God heard. God heard. In spite of who may cause you to run away or force you out or oppress you or, or be just ugly to you, be unfair to you, despise you, God sees you. He hears you, he will provide for you, and he will secure your future. He sees you, he hears you, he will provide for you, and he will secure your future. Here's what happens. Again, in Genesis 16, the Lord talks to Hagar. She began to use a new name for God. Isn't it interesting how God would use, (laughs) this is very, very interesting, God would use a single mother who is vulnerable, who is a slave, who is Egyptian. The most marginalized in the community to be the first one to name him. The first shall be last, the last shall be first. He uses the most marginalized in the community at the time to be the first one to name him, Elroy. So she names him, he names her, he calls her by name. He, he, he first saw her, he saw her need. Isn't it interesting that in the New Testament, when, whenever Jesus is getting ready to do a miracle, he does what? He sees people first. He sees them and then he has compassion on them. God doesn't overlook you like the captains choosing teams in your PE class. I was always the last one picked. He doesn't overlook you like your boss does when it's time for a promotion and you've been the one who's been dependable and punctual and effective and yet your boss gives their friend the promotion instead. God doesn't do that to you. God doesn't overlook you like the U.S. government overlooked blacks who returned from World War II and their fair share of benefits under the Servicemen uh, Readjustment Act of 1944 were denied to them, the GI Bill. They came back, they fought for this country, came back, and the country didn't fight for them. God doesn't overlook you the way that the U.S. government overlooked the blacks in war. He doesn't pass by, pass you by like the priest and the Levite did to the Jewish man who was beaten and left for dead on the side of the road. God doesn't do you like that. He sees you. He sees you. As a matter of fact, in Psalm verse, uh, chapter 11, verse 4, it says, The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is in his, on his heavenly throne. He observes everyone on earth. His eyes examine them. God sees you. God sees you. God sees you. The other things that happen in Hagar's story, which will help you name God, he hears you. Again, in Genesis 21, verses 16 and 17, they were cry- she was crying out to the Lord, this is all the water that we have left. I don't know what's going to happen. We're going to die. She's crying out. He hears Ishmael, the, the word, the name Ishmael, the name of her son, it derives from the verb to hear or to take heed. It's no wonder that when Hagar was crying, the Bible tells us that God heard the boy. His name means to hear, to take heed. Some of you know what it feels like to be heard, to not be heard. You're in relationships where you don't feel listened to. You are at a job where you don't feel appreciated or listened to. Perhaps you are a parent and you don't feel heard or listened to. The author and preacher Caroline Westerhoff, she says, we are called to arrange inviting spaces. We are called to stand at open doors and extend our hands. We are to be accessible to make time and to listen. In this great book called uh, The Lost Art of Listening, the author Michael P. Nichols, he says, it hurts not to be listened to, especially by those we count on for understanding. He says, being heard means being taken seriously. 
So here, Hagar is in the wilderness crying, and God takes her seriously. And what happens? What happens? He says, uh, I hear you crying. Okay, now look up. Look up. Open your eyes and see a well of water. He provides for her. That's the third thing that God does. He sees, he hears, he provides. Although Hagar and Ishmael were sent away with bread and with water, this just wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. God was able to provide for them in this moment. How was it possible for God to open Hagar's eyes for her to discover a well of water in the desert? Because he's God. <laughs> because he's God. And here's the truth of it. The person who rejects you doesn't prohibit God from providing for you. The person who rejects you doesn't prohibit God from providing for you. Abraham and Sarah were perfectly poised to provide everything that uh, Hagar and Ishmael were going to need as they sent them away, but they didn't. They were selfish, and they just gave them a little bit. But that's okay. That's okay because, again, the person who rejects you doesn't prohibit God from providing for you. Here they are in this desert, this plain, flat, unforested grassland, and God provides a well of water for them. God sees you. God hears you. God provides for you, and God, God secures your future. What happens in verses 20 and 21? God was with the boy as he grew. He lived in the desert and became an archer. He got a job, y'all. God, he secured his future. Yes, you were rejected, but I'm going to train you. Your hands are going to be really, really, really good to where you can provide for yourself. It's one thing for me to give you a muffin, Lorraine. It's another thing for me to give you the recipe. God says, I'm going to provide for you. I'll secure your future. And guess what else he did? He gave him a job. Here's a lesson, y'all, though, for real. He gave him a job, and then he gave him a wife. <laughs> While he was living in the desert of Paran, his mother got a wife for him from Egypt. He got a job, and he got a wife. Why does this matter? It matters because God wanted to solidify the fact that God doesn't just meet your needs for today but continues with his generosity in your life, and he cares about your legacy. You were rejected. You were mistreated. You were overlooked. You were despised. And yet, God, he sees you. He hears you. He provides for you. And he secures your future. For those of you who are still taking notes, those are the four things you can write down in your notes on Elroy. God sees me, God hears me, God provides for me, and God secures my future. Again, you are able to see different aspects and different facets of God based on the situations you find yourself in. And again, all month long, all month long, we are going to be unpacking just a little bit more about some different names of God. Again, we cannot go through all of them, but you can. You can. You can. What's in a name? What's in a name? What we call God matters. What we call God matters. Your name matters. My name matters. Toni Morrison matters. Zora Neale Hurston matters. Maya Angelou matters, Alice Walker matters, these famous African-American authors, they matter. What's in a name? What we call God matters. And again, the situations that we find ourselves in will enable us to meet him in a different way. Even when your back is against the wall, he will call you by name. So you can call him by name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray tonight. God, thank you so much. Thank you for who you are. Thank you that you are good and your mercy endures 
forever. Thank you, God, that what we call you matters, and we will continue to just see and experience you in different ways based on where we find ourselves. May we not despise those times of suffering and those times of pain and those times of hurt, because it's in those times that we get to know you as healer and as friend and as provider and as the one who covers us. And at the same time, we do look forward to those times where we can rejoice, where we can rejoice and, and, and be excited about who you are and, and name you other things. God, thank you that you are Elroy. You are the one who sees us tonight. You are the one who hears us. You are the one who provides for us that, that, that well of water in the middle of a desert. And yes, God, you are the one who secures our future. So, Lord, we thank you so much for being the God who cares deeply for us. People may walk away. People may, may use us, may abuse us, may talk bad about us, may mistreat us. But God, you will never leave us. You will never forsake us. And we are so grateful to be called your children and the sheep of your pasture tonight. God, we say that we love you and we honor you. And we thank you for who you've created us to be. We thank you for what you've called us to do. Most of all, thank you, God, for who you are. For your name matters. In Jesus' name, amen. Repeat after me. God sees me. God hears me. God provides for me. God will secure my future. If you believe that, say amen. Amen, amen. I have a few things I want to share with all of you before we, uh, before we leave tonight. Pastor Eric, I'm going to ask you to guide me, okay? And uh, whichever slide you put up first will be the one in which I share more information about. And so, um, these things I want to make sure you are aware of. First of all, I want to make sure that you are continuing. Do you, do you know that you need structure in your life? I need structure in my life. You know what, you know what this does? This helps me be a better follower of Jesus. It really does. Because my alarm goes off twice a day. It's 7.01 a.m. and at 5.59 p.m. And at 7.01 a.m., uh, it doesn't matter if I already spent some time with the Lord praying or, or, or not, but it, it, pause, it causes me to stop, to pause. I pray for this neighborhood, this our parish, on Ramps Parish, the little neighborhood. And then at 5.59 p.m., I pray for the city of Fresno. Would you all please set your alarms and join me wherever you are, wherever you are, wherever you are, seven days a week, know that it's 701 on ramps. All of us, look at these people around here. All of us are stopping wherever we are and we are praying together. Even if we are not in the same room, we are praying at the same time. What's next, Pastor Eric? Um, whole life giving tonight as you leave in the cafe, there is a table. And in the table, there's uh, a box and there's a little um, tablet and there's and, and you can give. I want to continue to invite you. This is another thing that helps me be a better follower of Jesus. And some of you, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense to you. But this, but my and Pastor Reese's consistent giving financially helps us be more faithful followers of Jesus on so many levels. One of them is that it reminds us to trust God, requires us to trust God because we're giving away money that otherwise we could be using to buy clothes or pay for gas in the gas tank or whatever. What did we hear tonight? God sees me. God hears me. God what? God provides from me. And God secures my future. The other thing it does is it reminds me that I am not my own savior. That's right. I'm not my own savior. And so when we give away financially these, these, these very valuable resources, it is a reminder to me that money doesn't save me. That's right. that, that I am not, that me working harder isn't the answer to my problems. 
that actually God, because he sees me, because he hears me, because he provides for me, and because he secures my future, it helps me and Pastor Reese lean into that in a very real and tangible way. So in the, on the table in the cafe, you can give. You can also give online. You can give through PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, lots of other ways. We want to invite you to do that. What's next, Pastor Eric? Oh, this Tuesday night, don't forget, we have new... Um, no, 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 no. We have deeper dive this deeper dive this Tuesday. Pastor Reese is going to finish her message, I think. Oh, Pastor Eric is along with you. Fantastic. Anyway, come this Tuesday, potluck. If you've been missing the dinner lately, you've been really missing something. Mama, Lorraine, Sarah, Team, Rebecca, they have been smashing it. I'm telling you, dinner is not like it's not. I mean, it is not McDonald's chicken nuggets. Like, I'm telling you, it is a din -ter. It is so good. Anyway, join us, potluck, bring something, contribute something, anything out of your cupboards, anything you want to cook up, bring it. We'll have a great dinner at 6 o'clock, and then we've got uh, impact groups at 6.30 p.m. What's next? All right. Oh, right now, in just a few moments, immediately following this gathering, all those that are current or future worship leaders, those that are interested in dance, in spoken word, in visual art, as a musician, as a singer, um, we are going to have a very, very brief meeting right here in the multi-purpose room, right here in this sanctuary. Just stay behind. Uh, we're going to start immediately after this gathering. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. This is for you. I'm talking to you. Stay right here, and we're going to just have a quick meeting. All right, what's next? Um, friends, we are going to celebrate the life of our brother H. Spees on June 10th, which is going to be next Saturday. Would you please pause? Would you please put this in your calendar? For those of you that, had, that knew H, you were loved by H. You were seen by H. Would you join us? It's going to be right downtown, okay? Right downtown at the Warner's Theater, just over here, Okay. On Tuolumne and uh, Fulton. Join us there at 3 p.m. Uh, it's going to be a two-hour memorial service. Um, we've certainly been in touch with, you know, with Terry and uh, with their kids um, quite a bit. And um, it would mean so much to them if you would join, uh, join them so that we can continue to grieve together as a family the passing of our dear and beloved brother, H. Spees. Hope you'll join us. Uh, Pastor Eric, is that it? All right, fantastic. What? Oh, thank you. Um, and then and then at Dickey Playground on Sunday, the 11th, it's going to be so great, you all. We have a Lowell community celebration. It's going to be amazing. Why don't you just come out on Sunday? Sunday the 11th, you, it's, it's your day, it's your Sabbath, you, you've got nothing on the schedule. Join us from 10 to 1 at Dickey Park. It will be absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. Is that it, Pastor Eric? Did we get it? And the women's conference, Mama, you're right. There it is. June 24th, 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, please, please plan. Sisters, please plan to be here. Brothers, please encourage the sisters to come. Encourage one another to be here. It's going to be fantastic. Women's conference, 2023. 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Please be here for more information about the Women's Conference. See Mama, raise your hand. See Mama Marsha, all right, you all? It's going to be outstanding June 24th. Cannot wait. Last couple things I just needed to mention that I know I was supposed to is I want to make sure that you know that Elders Debbie and, 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 Elders, uh, and Elder Mama Marsha are here to pray for you tonight. If you um, would need prayer for anything whatsoever, they would love to pray for you. Please don't leave without them praying for you. Um, if you feel tonight that you need someone just to join you in praying for whatever it is going on in your life. Would you all please stand? Let's stand tonight. Let's stand. I want to just pray a blessing and we're going to dismiss. Don't forget, those of you that are interested in, um, uh, in music ministry, future, current um, uh, worship leaders, dance, visual arts, Singers, musicians, please stay right here. It's going to be very, very brief, okay? All right, Father, thank you for this day. We are so grateful for your blessings. We pray now that you will 
God, go with us. Father, I pray specifically that even as we leave this place, God, in these stories of Abraham and Sarah and Hagar and Ishmael and Isaac, God, that we would, we would be confident that in the midst of all that we are facing, that we're not alone. You see us. You provide for us. You hear us. You secure our futures. You promised that you would never leave us nor forsake us. May that, may your presence be tangibly known to us all. We thank you for loving us the way that you do. You show us how to love ourselves, and you show us how to love others. May we do so.